I can remember the moment when I, as it were, got Picasso. Mm -hmm. I can remember going to an exhibition at the Tate of Picasso's work and going rather sort of dutifully, I should go. And at a certain point in the show, I suddenly burst out laughing. And I thought, I get you, Picasso. You're having fun. And there, that's a very important feature of Picasso, the artist. He was, he was having serious fun. And he did, had fun with color. He had fun with form, with fun, fun with image. But he had great fun, serious fun, with other artists. And any of you who know Picasso will be aware of that. that he produced hundreds of paintings, thousands of drawings and etchings based on the art of other people, doing just as these composers and, and, and choreographers have done. Um, and so the analogy there is, is rather good. And um, there have been exhibitions about Picasso's interest in Cezanne, uh, Picasso's interest in Van Gogh, Picasso's interest in Velasquez, in Manet, and so on. So it's a well-known feature of Picasso as an artist, this sort of feeding off the past. Um, getting inspiration from the past, making riffs on the art of the past. Well, as, as I've mentioned, as has been mentioned about 10 years or so ago, I began to bring together various threads where I looked at Picasso and I saw Degas. And a couple of more famous moments had been spotted before. I wasn't the first person onto the territory. But the more I looked, the more I found. And if you go to the Clark, you will see again and again the different rooms and the different galleries, moments when Picasso has clearly seen a group of works by Degas and thought, hmm, I can have some fun with this. Or I got to get in there and fight this guy because Picasso was very, very competitive and he, he really wanted to be the best. And so if Degas had done a really wonderful painting, he wanted to see if he could do an even better painting. So that's, that's the basic idea behind the exhibition. Um, what should be mentioned is I, I actually had a collaborator on this show who was an equal partner, Elizabeth Cowling, who's a Picasso scholar. And we've worked for several years bringing together the evidence and, 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 and uh, questioning the evidence and saying, well, how can we get this across? This is a point in the exhibition which I think has probably caused more trouble than anything else. Um, <laughs> This was considered very daring even by my colleagues. All of you know, I think, the, most of you will know the thing on the right, correct? <laughs> Degas' famous sculpture, The Little Dancer, age 14, exhibited in Paris in 1881, which caused a tremendous controversy. It was regarded as vulgar and cheap and modern and disgusting and so on. We don't need to worry about that. But it became extremely famous. And when Picasso arrived in Paris in the early 20th century, we are arguing in the exhibition in the catalogue that he became obsessed by this sculpture, and he had very good reasons to be obsessed by it. And he made some drawings that relate to the sculpture, um, and he, made, um, he tried to introduce it into a couple of his paintings, not always getting it right first time. But the, pic the picture on the left, this extraordinary picture which we found in a museum in Italy, in Milan, and had to more or less give blood to them to get it for the show. <laughs> Um, there it is in the show exhibition, it's side by side, and all I say to you is just think about the position of this girl. Look at Degas' sculpture, she's standing with her right foot forward, turned out. She's standing with her arms behind her back, like that, it's an unusual <coughs> pose. And she has her head sort of tilted up slightly, arrogantly. It, you'll find all of those features in the Picasso, slightly differently um, arranged. And when I tell you that the Picasso is exactly the same height as the sculpture, <laughs> you begin to think, I begin to think, that this is something that Picasso did specifically, looking back at Degas' work of art and saying, I need to deal with this. I need to have fun with it. Maybe I need to do something even better, even more modern than anything Degas has done. On the right is a, a print by Degas of three dancers on the stage. And this is in because it's rather a light-hearted piece by Degas' standards. The girls are um, leaping in the air, and they're not at their most necessarily their most graceful or elegant. And I think a lot of people look at it and smile. Well, when Picasso saw this or something like it, he, he made a very similar 
a work with a rather similar feeling about it, the drawing on the left, which is from the Museum of Modern Art in New York, which is two, shall we say, slightly chubby dancers, um, certainly by our standards and even by the standards of their day, who are doing very cliched ballet things. Um, it's, it's almost like a joke <coughs> about the ballet as much as anything. Now, I should mention at this point that by this date, Picasso had got married. He married uh, for the first time in 19... I note the first time. It wasn't, there was a succession. Um, in 1918, he married Olga Koklova, who was a prima ballerina from the Diaghilev Company who, that had come from Russia and took Europe by storm and America by storm. He married Olga. Um, he, he painted and drew her in her ballet dress, in her white tutu, even though on stage she was dancing in, to works by Stravinsky and, and so forth. Very, you know, she was in the Sacre de Printemps, for example. Um, but so Picasso by this time is almost kind of reluctantly pulled into the ballet world. He hadn't shown any interest in the ballet before his, his involvement with the Diaghilev company. Another part of the exhibition where, just continuing this, this theme, the sculpture on the right is by Degas, a lot of you have seen these bronze figures by Degas in museums and, and, and galleries and so on, private collections, uh, made by Degas in the middle of his career when he was really a master of ballet form, um, much collected, much admired today. But we know that in 1931, Picasso, who was by then very famous and uh, could do anything he wanted, went to see an exhibition of these bronzes in Paris, in the middle of Paris. And within a few months, he'd started making some little sculptures of his own about the same size. And we have three of them in the exhibition alongside three Degas bronzes. And again, this is very contra controversial. This has never been proposed before. And um, one of my instincts when I look at them is to smile, because clearly Degas is, uh, Picasso is having fun. Um, but there's always, it's always serious fun with Picasso. He's, he, here he's trying to kind of do Degas, but maybe even update Degas, certainly, and maybe even go beyond Degas into something more modern, more radical, more, more edgy for, for, for the modern world. From your perspective, how does this exhibit really ask us to reconsider what we think we know about Degas and who this man was and um, anything, you know, just sort of to broaden that, that picture that we may be holding in our head of what, what his work's about? Well, I, I have a belief that exhibitions should challenge people. Um, it, it's so easy to float into a room where there are 10 Monets on the wall or you know, Leonardo da Vinci or something. You say, oh, this is so nice, and then let's go and have lunch. Um, <laughs> art is a very, very serious thing. It's a very, very serious business, and often it's art that survives from a civilization when everything else disappears. Um, artists, even though they have fun, are deeply serious people. And um, I think quite often we take art, whether it's ballet or music or, or, or painting, we take it for granted and, we, and, and we, we, we deal with it in a rather easy way. Um, I like to do exhibitions that surprise people and challenge people, um, either by showing them art they haven't seen before or showing them an aspect of an artist they haven't seen before, um, or, as in this case, uh, juxtapos juxtaposing two artists because I, I think that inevitably makes you look at them both so somewhat differently. Um, it, curiously enough, for some people, it's made them think of Picasso as a much more serious, traditional artist, because he's looking backwards. But the good news is, at least for me, is that it's made people think the opposite about Degas. And I've been arguing for half my life that Degas is a dangerous modern artist. Uh, and people laugh at me because he's the guy of the ballet dancers. Come on. <laughs> um, but um, Degas, um, especially at certain points in his career particularly, was very radical. Uh, he upset a lot of his contemporaries. And the stuff that he did at the end of his life is still not really comfortably absorbed by us because it is so complex and so, so demanding. So the fact that the greatest of all modern artists picks Degas out for attention tells us something, I think.